Hi, everyone. Uh, I am Pastor Chuck, and welcome to Theology in 10. Thank you very much for joining me here today on Theology in 10. Uh, Theology in 10 is a 10-minute Bible session in which I answer your questions uh, about uh, the church, worship, uh, Christianity, church history, the Bible, theology, all those things mixed together. I am an ordained minister in the Evangelical Lutheran Church in America, and I am pleased that you are here today. Well, it has been a hot minute since I have uh, been on here, uh, and uh, um, that's because uh, there was some, uh, it was a kind of a hectic end of the year for me and my family, and uh, of course, Advent and Christmas and all the things that happen. And uh, one thing that I, I try to be really good at is managing my time. And uh, sometimes I'm not really good at that. So uh, I needed a little bit of a break from uh, coming on here and recording some of these, but I am back. Um, I think my time management is is underway again, uh, stronger than ever. And uh, so uh, I will be on here uh, more regularly once again. Today, uh, we have an interesting question about, <coughs> pardon me, something we do in worship. Something we do in worship that uh, someone uh, asked about, and uh, it didn't come directly to me. It came uh, to me through someone else, um, which is fine. I I'm glad that people, uh, even if you don't want to ask me or send an email or send a message, that's okay. Uh, hey, have someone else bring up something that you ask and, and and we can we can work it out. Uh, this is uh, about education and being informative and uh, having some fun. So um, uh, this question uh, uh, is, as I said, about worship, uh, about something we do in worship uh, occasionally here at Christ Lutheran. Um, and it's an interesting question, which we'll get to in a minute. But uh, first, I think uh, because it is about worship, I need to talk about this little booklet that I wrote, <laughs> An Introduction to Christian Worship uh, by me, <laughs> uh, Reverend uh, Chuck Schinkeldecker. Uh, I wrote this little booklet. Um, it is basically a, a, a brief explanation of what is Christian worship. And you can see there we have a, a brief explanation. Uh, and inside it has some uh, uh, explanations about different words that you might hear in church. Uh, particularly if you're not a regular churchgoer, you might hear words like liturgy or sacrament, and you're wondering, well, what, what, is, what are those words? What, what do they mean? Why do church people have to be so like weird and use all these weird words that no one, no one else ever uses in daily life? Um, well, um, in part, the uh, we hold on to these because they're they are very descriptive. Uh, but these words originally, like. 2,000 years ago, uh, were used in everyday life. They were every everyday words. And so uh, we we hold on to them, uh, um, I guess, for the sake of holding on to them. I guess there's really is no specific reason other than we all know what they mean. If you're in the, if you know that if you have the secret decoder ring, and if you don't, well, you need something like this to explain what these words mean. Um, and so, uh, and then it has uh, the various parts of worship, that you'll often find uh, not only here at Christ Lutheran, but uh, uh, in Lutheran churches around the world. And, and actually the majority of Christian churches around the world follow this basic pattern of worship. Uh, you'll see little differences here and there, but the vast majority of Christians have always followed this pattern of worship sent from the very, very early days, which is why in this booklet I talk about it being not only historic Christian worship, but I talk about it being biblical Christian worship uh, because uh, the Bible is very clear about what we're supposed to do when we worship and how we're supposed to worship. It's not a great mystery. Um, I mean, it is a mystery in the sense that we are encountering God in worship, but uh, like the things that we do, like we don't just like, well, we don't have no idea. The Bible is very clear about different things and what's permissible and what isn't. And that brings us to the question today. The question today, uh, and I will just bring it up here uh, very briefly, if you give me a moment. Here is the question today. 
Uh, and as I said, this was inspired, uh, actually, uh, as it was explained to me, it was, ex it was inspired at the, our Christmas Eve worth worship and someone leaned into someone and said, uh, Hey, is that incense? Why are we becoming Catholic or are we becoming too Catholic here? Um, and that's the question. And, uh, uh I smile and I, I, because it's a common question, um, it's a common question that Lutherans often get uh, when people uh, see uh, a church that might use incense from time to time. Is it too Catholic? Well, first we have to ask, what do you mean by Catholic? Um, because we are Catholic. We are the Catholic Church. We are a part of the Catholic Church, which means, doesn't mean the Roman Catholic Church, which is has authority uh, which is the the authority is by one person, the the Bishop of Rome, who, who oversees the entire Roman Catholic Church, the Roman Bishop, hence the title Roman Catholic Church. Uh, we are the Catholic Church in the sense that we are part of the whole, the universal. We are a part of the the wholeness of the people of God. Um, and we're Catholic in the sense that we're also a very historic church. Lutheranism did not spring up out of the ground. Uh, last week somewhere. Uh, it is in a lineage of the historic Christian church. And Martin Luther himself was a Roman Catholic monk and a Roman Catholic priest. And Martin Luther did not want to invent a new church. Um, he wanted to reform the church, which Martin Luther did. He helped reform the church. Uh, and so we are part of the Catholic church. We just aren't under the authority of the Bishop of Rome, uh, uh, known today as the Pope. Um, now, it's more complicated than that, and I don't need to go into all the details, uh, but um, uh, when Lutherans or someone says, hey, eh, Catholics are a little too, or excuse me, Lutherans are a little too Catholic, um, it, it assumes a couple of different things that uh, may or may not be uh, quite accurate. Uh, the other thing I would like to bring up is that even though we call ourselves Lutheran, uh, Martin Luther would have hated that. In fact, he did hate it. Uh, the term Lutheran was a derogatory term that people would use to say, oh, those people that, that are listening to Luther, those Lutherans. And so uh, Luther did not want a church named after him at all. Uh, he saw what he was doing as in accordance with the gospel and the scriptures and the historic practices of the historic church. And so uh, the fact that we call ourselves Lutherans today is a little bit uh, ironic because Martin Luther himself would have just, he hated that. So uh, um, so there's enough about that. There's lots more history we can get into. We don't need to do that. I want to get to the question. Why do we use uh, worship? Or why do we use incense in worship? Excuse me. Why do we use incense in worship? Uh, is it too Catholic? Is it wrong? Is it not biblical? Well, here's the thing. Using incense in worship is absolutely biblical. Uh, the biblical actually tells us to use incense in worship over and over and over again. Repeatedly, it tells us this. Uh, specifically, uh, over and over again in the Hebrew scriptures, the Old Testament, it's all over. God talks about burning incense and having an altar of incense, and uh, that, that the incense is, are, uh, is a sim symbol of our prayers rising up to God. It, it is a, a sacrifice that we make, not a, not a blood sacrifice, but you know, we, we pay a little bit for incense and then we burn it and it just poof, literally goes up in smoke. Right. Um, but that's a sacrifice. Uh, um, now, in the New Testament, uh, uh, Jesus is our sacrifice. Right. So we don't need to make sacrifices anymore. However, the New Testament still talks about incense being used in worship, uh, particularly in the book of Revelation. Uh, Revelation 5, 8, uh, incense is like all over the book of Revelation. Uh, angels are burning incense. The saints, uh, those of the gone before us are, are burning incense. Um, and uh, uh, also, uh, what are the three gifts that the Magi or the three wise men bring the baby Jesus? Gold, frankincense, and myrrh. Well, what is frankincense? Well, it's 
It's a specific fragrance of incense. Um, it's given to Jesus. Uh, and Jesus uh, never says later in life, you know, these three weird guys gave me some incense. And I, I disagree with that. No, no. Uh, incense is a sign of Jesus' priestly mission, that Jesus is our high priest. Incense. And I'll just read this from my from the little booklet that I wrote briefly. Uh, on occasion, we may use incense in worship. Both the Old and New Testaments encourage the use of incense because it is a symbol of our prayers. We sing hymn. Psalm 141 talks about, let my prayer rise as incense before you. It's a symbol. It doesn't really do anything. It doesn't do anything. It's not magic. God really doesn't care if we burn incense or don't burn incense. But it is a symbol that reminds us of something. It also reminds us that Jesus is our high priest. It reminds us that the gospel smells sweet and it is good. Now, in the Lutheran church, do we have to burn it? Of course not. We don't have to burn incense at all. Lots of Lutheran churches don't. And lots of Lutheran churches haven't for uh, about 100 years or so. Uh, but if you go to Germany, they still do, and they always did. Uh, if you go to uh, Scandinavia, they always did. Um, and it's making a little bit of a comeback here in the United States. Uh, and uh, because it's biblical. Now, we're free to use it, and Luther also said we're free not to use it. This is part of being free in Christ. We don't have to. There's lots of things we don't have to do. We don't have to have candles. We don't have to have incense. We don't have to have art in our buildings. We don't even have to have church buildings at all to worship. We can worship out in the woods. A little chilly right now to do that, but we could, and sometimes we do. But sometimes... It's nice to make a sanctuary where people can come in and be away from the noise of the world in which they live. Now, here in Southwest Minnesota, where I am a pastor, uh, it's kind of easy to be away from the noise of the world. But when you're somewhere else, you're, when you're in a big city, you can't escape the noise of the world always. But you can in a church. And incense is just one way that helps us do that. In the same way that uh, you might, uh, in your home, burn uh, potpourri or scented candles just because you like the smell. Now, here at Christ Lutheran, we do it a couple of times a year. And um, we're free to do that. We're also free not to do it. That's part of being free in Christ. But it's not too Roman Catholic. It's quite biblical. Martin Luther did it in his churches. And uh, Lutheran churches around the world always did it um, and still do it today. Um, and we do it occasionally here at Christ Lutheran, and that's okay. Um, I always try to be sensitive to uh, people with allergies, and we do uh, have used an uh hypoallergenic incense. Um, I also continue to try to find ways to lower the smoke because it's usually not the scent that bothers people, but the smoke. And there's new ways to burn incense uh, that, that reduces the smoke. And I'm experimenting with that. Um, but uh, rest assured that um, doesn't happen here very often, does occasionally. And um, I try to be very mindful of making sure that when it does happen, uh, it's it's typically up front, not among the people. Uh, and uh, uh, we can do it. We don't have to. I don't have to. Um, but uh, it's also a symbol of something. It's a symbol of our prayers and a symbol of the sweetness of God in our life. And uh, research has actually shown that it actually, uh, incense actually does uh, reduce uh, stress uh, hormones and, and stressors in the brain. So, uh, um, you know, sit back and relax and uh, uh, just uh, uh, try to imagine um, uh, 
that it's 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 uh helping you just be a little more relaxed because this is the final thing I'll say, and this is over 10 minutes, but uh, um, the last thing I'll say is this. We are embodied creatures. We we worship not just with our mind and our vision, but with our hearing and our sense of smell. We worship with our five senses, and uh, God knows this, and that's why God has prescribed all of these different things in the, in the, in the Bible about how to, how to worship and how to sing. And um, that's why Martin Luther himself was a big proponent of singing, which had fallen into disuse at his, in his time. No one sang in church anymore, except the priest. And sometimes they didn't do it very well uh, because not everybody is gifted at that. Uh, he wanted to bring that back. Uh, and he did. And um, because we are embodied creatures, we need to express ourselves. And scent is just one way that we experience the world. Sight is another way, hearing, touch, all of these different ways we experience the world. And, and so uh, God wants us to experience it in all those ways. Um, once again, uh, as Luther said, you're free to use it. You're free not to use it. We don't use it very often here, but I do occasionally. And I always try to be very sensitive to the needs and the, the concerns of people when, when we do use it. But uh, don't be shocked when you see it. Uh, it's perfectly Lutheran. It's perfectly biblical. Um, and uh, uh, like I said, uh, it is a symbol of our prayers rising up to God uh, in the same way that candles are a symbol that Jesus is the light of the world. Do the candles really do anything? Does the incense really do anything? Not really. Um, but there is an aesthetic there that you don't necessarily get just from uh, four white walls, right? Uh, our, our Lutheran churches are typically very pretty. They're shaped like a boat. Um, so uh, if you have never noticed, the inside of a Lutheran church is typically looks like an upside down boat because the church is the ark, not Noah's ark, but the ark in which God saves God's people. So uh, I will end that for today. I went a little longer than 10 minutes, uh, but uh, uh, for my first time back. So uh, uh, this has been Theology in 10. If you have any questions, please email me. Please uh, get to me through some other means. Uh, and um, I will see you next time. So uh, have a good week, everybody. And uh, until next time, I will see you then. Bye now.